You know, we have been for the past several, a couple of, three months, almost three months, we've been dwelling on a theme called living by the power of God. I never intended it to be that long, but it went this long. And for the past few weeks, we were talking about what are some of the weapons that is available, resources available to God's children, because we're going to live by the power of God. Amen. So we looked at the fact that we have spirit of God available for us that we can fight back. Amen. We also have victory by, you know, by submitting to God. Amen. We resist Satan by submitting to God. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. None of us think about submission as a power tool. Indeed, it's a power tool. We submit to God, we, and then we resist the devil. We also looked at the fact that we have the sword of the Spirit and the armor of God to help us. We also looked at the fact that praise becomes very powerful. The power of praise. We also looked at the power of prayer. Amen. Prayer is still one of the most powerful weapons children of God can have. Praise the Lord. Amen. Prayer is very powerful. You know, Paul speaks of that in the book of Ephesians. Power that will be released when you pray. Amen. As you pray in response to our prayers, the spirit, the power that worked in Jesus, the same power will be released in response to your prayer. Amen. Power that raised Jesus from the dead will be released as you and me pray in the name of Jesus. So prayer becomes powerful. One of the weapons that we use Amen. And we also looked at the fact that we resist devil by being self-controlled and alert. And I think we took two sessions to talk about what does it mean to be self-controlled. We talked about some kind of spiritual intoxication where we are not aware of what we are doing. We looked at the fact that even the prodigal, a point came back to his senses. He was intoxicated by the things of this world. He couldn't have clarity in what he was thinking. But he came back to his senses. So being self-controlled, we talked about all those things. And alert. We talked about being disciplined. Paul uses the imagery of an athlete. No one just simply goes to a ground and starts running. But you discipline yourself. I discipline myself. You have to discipline our thoughts. We don't welcome every thought that comes. Thoughts will come. Whether you welcome it or not. But to receive it, dwell on it, is your responsibility. You could say no to it. It's like UPS trying to deliver a package which requires signature. And you say, I refuse to receive this. You bring the packet, tempt me like there must be something million dollar stuff inside this. That's okay, man. I'm not signing it. You could say no to it. That's where discipline really comes. Then last Sunday, we talked about the seven, which is probably the last one on that weapons part. We trust in God's power and protection. God's power and God's protection is available for every child of God. Amen. Let's praise him for that. 
Amen. His protection is available for every child of God. His power is available. His protection is available for us. Amen. We looked at how God made promise to people of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter. But God said, if you would keep your part of the covenant, your part of the promise, okay, I will be also a covenant keeping God. Praise God. In the Chattangal Ningal Pramani Kianangil, E. Parayna Gadiangal Ningal Kesampovi Ketilla, Alangal E. Anigrahil Ningal Kwe. These blessings will come. This protection will be available for you. Amen. I hope you remember us talking about God promising him that I will send. I know you are going with no weapons in your hand. But don't worry. I will send my fear ahead of you. Amen. I will send my fear ahead of you. That's the promise of God. He will send this fear. You know, that's one of the reasons we say even Rahab, the harlot, the prostitute. She was talking to the spy. He said, man, you have no idea what's happening inside Jericho. We have this fortified city. This is a big wall, thick wall. Nobody can penetrate here. But I tell you, the hearts are already penetrated by the fear of God. It's melting like wax here. Because the fear of your God has come into the heart. It's ready. This is ready. This is ready. Harvest is ready. It's just you guys need to just break in and come. See, God prepares ground for us. You know, we also looked at from Psalms 121. And Psalm has identified our source comes from the Lord. Amen. We also listen to the attentiveness of our Lord towards his children. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he also told us that he will watch over us. He will keep us from harm. Amen. And he will oversee all the activities now and forever. Amen. This is not for 24 hours, not for one week, or one month, but forever the Lord will protect his people. Amen. See, that's the reason we celebrate when you come to worship God. Amen. It's a wonderful thing to just give a clap offering to Him and praise Him with your tongue. Hallelujah. Make that noise for Him. Hallelujah. He's a wonderful God. There are so many people in the scriptures who personally experience the power and the protection of God. We know David, he can testify. Daniel can testify. He was in the lion's den. Bible says God shut the mouth of the... We have, we have fallen into a lion's den. Could be a different kind of lions, of course. But the Lord shuts the mouth of those lions. Hallelujah. And you came back and say, praise God. Nobody said a word to me. Because you have no idea. Because they shut the lion's mouth. Hallelujah. Our God is still in the business of shutting mouths. Hallelujah. So David speaks about it. Daniel can speak about it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all the three Hebrew boys, they can talk about God coming into the fiery furnace as a fourth person. Even this morning we were talking about even in the fiery furnace, the Lord comes down to save his people. Hallelujah. This is how we, we remind. What is it? This is not all about me inventing something, coming and telling you on a Sunday morning. We are simply here in the presence of God, telling each other through the song, through the testimony that we serve a mighty God. If you have to go through a fiery furnace, 
Be assured, God will come. These angels will come. Hallelujah. Then a suchipan, then a rechipan, and then a dudan maru to kalpikam. Hallelujah. Whatever your circumstances you go through, God will come with His help. That's why we praise Him. You know, to Peter, Lord tells Peter, Satan tried to sift you like wheat. Pishadi dene, godam bole, enoran dido. He asked me for permission. I know he was up to something, but Peter, I was praying for you. Nyan dene kundi en dido. I prayed for you, Peter. What a good news it is to know that we have a God who intercedes for us. We have Jesus who intercedes for us. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a mediator between us and God. Hallelujah. How wonderful that it is to know that he's always with us. So always remember, Satan will do things. But Satan was limited in doing only what God allowed him to do in the life of Job. You probably look at Lord Job's life and say, oh, it's a tragedy. But only thing is that he, he's not seeing it. Job is not seeing the drama. We the readers, we see the drama. Right? We see what's happening. You see the providence of God. You see the fingerprint of God. And what a beautiful conclusion to that story. God finally restores everything. See, the story begins, Satan comes and tells them, you know, God was bragging about his servant. Satan says, no wonder why you're so pious and godly, because you made a fence around him. God has put up an invisible fence around you. What a wonderful thing it is to know that. There's a fence that unless God permits, nobody can pull that down. Nobody can take that apart. Only, only with the permission of my God that somebody can then take up that, 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 that fence around you. He's protecting you. Hallelujah. Wall of fire around you. We talked about a shield around you. Not a flat shield. Something that goes all around you. 360 degrees, you know, um, a shield. Any direction, there's protection for you. Hallelujah. How wonderful things to remember those things. To Joshua, God says in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, Be strong. And courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Hallelujah. What a beautiful promise it is. God is with us. God of hosts will come with me. Hallelujah. Wherever you go, whatever the circumstances you face, I will come with you. I will be with you. I will never abandon you. I will not be a remote control person, but I will come with you. I will walk with you. I will hold your hand. The Lord is with us. Joshua 1 verse 5, be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Hallelujah. 
which i will never leave you nor forsake you as i was with moses joshua i will be with the don't look at your degree don't compare yourself with moses moses was learned in all the all the all the trade all the skills of egypt <clears throat> he probably studied in the west point military academy raised in a palace knew the administration probably civil engineering he built cities strong men mighty and then joshua is left in a vacuum all of a sudden moses is gone praise god see that's when we make comparison fear comes to us when we make comparison we get discouraged praise god god has to speak to joshua joshua i always like the chapter 1 i was not planning to talk on it but see moses is no more <clears throat> we know he died but we don't know where he was buried marichu nariyam evada adakke nariyilla so here is a person what is joshua's qualification well he was a fighter soldier he was a servant to moses moshe ra gaike vella ulichu kodutha oru dasan throllu who is he in comparison to moses the mighty man probably felt so small i am nothing but see how god comes in chapter 1 i really like you know how god speaks to joshua he says straight away comes and tells them moses my servant is dead that's how conversation starts and the last one i am osha marichu see he is not god is not simply coming on a, I, you know god knows that he is fearful god knows that he is grieving dukkha manasunda so he is not really simply coming down and say hey josh how is everything going man and you are feeling sad there's such a vacuum here and you are kind of intimidated you know looking at the enormous task ahead of you asana god god deals very differently straight away changin nere or idi nu parangal straight to the heart of joshua moses is dead josh it's your time can i hear him and that stop worrying about moses stop worrying about military academy stop worrying about all the skills skill sets that you don't have and he possesses don't worry it was not the education of egypt it was not the military academy training it's not because anything learned in the palace it was my presence it was i was with moses hallelujah hallelujah it was my presence that made all the difference you can have all the phd in the world all research behind your sleeves but listen here very carefully only the presence of god only the might of god only the grace of god only the favor of god upon your life will carry you through indravile devathu nammalodu parayal nee ninne nokki vashamikkande aavashyam onnum illa magane ende sannithyam ninde kooda undengil my presence is with you do not fear about anything that you are about to face hallelujah as i was with moses god is reassuring some of you this morning here as i was with moses i will be with you hallelujah i will be with you i will be with you hallelujah as i was with moses i will be with you hallelujah i will never leave you no forsake you listen to the word never never leave you no forsake you hallelujah how wonderful it is to hear this from god david as he was giving counsel to his son solomon who assumed the throne david says this is in first chronicle chapter 28 verse 20 he says then david continued be strong courageous do not work do the work don't be afraid or discouraged for the lord 
God, my God is with you. I like that. Amen. Magano do Varayana. Magana the Indiana. Ni better put the Thaidim Bunda. Prophets, do the work. Don't be afraid. Don't be frightened. Yehoiah Devam. End the Devam. Maybe some of your parents need to tell your children from your life experience. Praise God. Lord God, my God will be with you. Our God will be with you. Your grandpa's God will be with you. Your mama's God will be with you. Your dad's God will be with you. God, you brought us to this place. God has been a faithful God so far. God who led us through wilderness. God who is with us in our times of trouble. God who came to our little humble village and picked you up from that place and brought you to this land. And made you who you are today. That same God will be with you. You just remain faithful to him. Hallelujah. He will see it. He says he will not fail you, forsake you. He will see to it that all work related to the temple of the Lord is finished correctly. So Solomon was kind of worried about the enormous task, building this temple. Dad got the idea, David got the idea. But now the task is with the son. I think he was frightened a little bit. So the father had to assure him, Solomon, don't worry. Don't worry about the task. I know this probably talk about, we're talking billions here. You really look at the gold and all of the precious metals there. Son, Jehovah, my God will be your God. Amen. I really like when you come to the story of Book of Ruth, where Naomi and uh, Ruth is having conversation. Where Ruth is actually borrowing the faith. She's, she's not actually f- from an Israeli background. She's not a, from a Jewish background. She worshiped foreign gods. But for some reason, looking at the mother-in-law, her faith, her God, her people. She was challenged. She was attracted. Praise God. So listen, this morning, those who are here for the Bible study, pastors talked to us from the book of Titus. He said, it's our job as believers to demonstrate to the world God we serve. And there God calls himself, or by Holy Spirit says, God who never lies. Vyajam barayatta deivam, kallam barayatta deivam. Your people need to know that you worship a God who never lies. Can I hear an amen to that? People who do business with you should know that you serve a God who never lies. <clears throat> Praise God. God should know it. You're selling your, you're selling your house. I'm just simply using an example. You know there's a serious foundation problem. You're selling this to somebody that really know. Who said, oh, I don't need to do any inspection. This is good stuff. But no, in a in, in few months' time, he realizes this house has got serious. Found it. You're selling your car. You know, there's a serious engine problem. You, you waxed it, cleaned it, looks so beautiful. Two weeks down the road, the car stops. And he looks at you. He served a God who lies. Even saving the young nonavarina. I'm just this needs to trickle down. I'm just simply saying a few things that any of them. Workplace. Do you lie? Think about all of day to day things in life. People should know that this guy serve a God who never lies. Look at the practical application of it. Namada Prayugatila. Vyadam Barayapta Dayvata Pradasi Pika and Dayundal Nava Sarangal Vyoikanam. Amen. I think Naomi was going through a lot of difficult things. She calls herself bitter and all these things. But there is something that Ruth saw in her. 
That's the reason she is trying to borrow her faith. She said, your God is my God. Your people, my people, Ninda Daivam, Yenda Daivam, Ninda Janam, Yenda Janam. Where you go, I go, I follow because I like this God. There's something about your God that I have seen that I never seen in my former religion. This is what God is calling each of us to demonstrate your God to the other people. They will come and ask you, tell me what's the difference in you? God who never lies. Praise God. You know, all this different thing. God, he talked to a God being holy, God being loving, gracious God. This needs to be demonstrated in our lives so that others will be attracted. Amen. So David tells his son, son, don't worry. God will carry you through. I also want to just give you from the scripture. What are some of the means God employs when it comes to protecting us? I said, power of God and the protection of God is available for the children of God. Amen? Just want to just, just list them for you. These are all Bible verses. I'm just simply saying, uh, simply reading some of them to you. Okay. In Psalms 91, he says, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. For he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. Amen. Well, I gave you an example. I gave you an illustration about how the angelic protection came to that preacher. He uses angels. I want you to know that angels are there for your protection. The question to you is, have you ever asked for one? Have you ever asked for one angel? Or did you call your friend and say, hey man, I'm going through this. You know, I'm so scared, man. I don't know what to do. Call God. Call Jesus. Ask him. To dispatch an angel to come with you. To strengthen you. You may be facing an interview. You may be facing an exam. You may be facing a tough situation, a decision. Where you feel so frightened. Simply ask God. Lord, I need an angel. You probably need only one. You don't need a whole lot. Because one angel took care of 185,000 people. Ask. Ask. Well, you can see people, uh, you know, sometimes you hear in, in PYP or in other youth meetings, people talk about kind of make up stories. They say, oh, angels telling. I've been assigned to IPC Orlando for the past Many years, we have no work. Nobody is calling us. You're, you're assigned. God has assigned angels to you to, to take care of you. Bible says, angels are the ministering spirits of those who will inherit salvation. Yeah. Sometimes we say, oh, I wish I get some help. Help is available. Call. Okay? So start calling. Start asking Jesus for help. And you'll come back and say, I experienced an angelic help last week. That's the kind of testimonies that we would like to hear. From the young people, others, God sent an angel. Hallelujah. I know we, there's one time we ask for angels is when you take the car in the morning. We say, God, please. That's good. Tell it, I enjoy it. Some people forget that. But at least ask, start with that. Thank you, angel. Thank you, God. angel. We ask when you leave the house, but we fail to say when you reach home and say, thank you. 
Praise God. I have a good friend in New York. Um, so every time we go, when I travel with him, he say, oh, Pastor, let's pray. I also notice him every time he come back, park his car anywhere. He will stop and say, thank you, Kartavi. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe. Something that I learned. I, of course, pray when I start, but not necessarily when I come back. That's my fault. Give thanks in all circumstances. Hallelujah. So angels, one of the means God uses. There's something called, I'm going back to an Old Testament story. Um, God uses fire. We know that God uh, uses fire for so many different things. God sometimes saves people from fire. Sometimes God uses fire. In the second Kings, chapter 1, after the death of Ahab, King Ahab, Ahaziah actually fell from the lattice and became ill. You know, you understand this Israeli king and his family walked away from God, following after the idols, false gods, Baal worship. So there's no presence of God in the land of Israel. So he sent messengers to go to inquire Beelzebub, the god of Ekron. Okay? What is it? Just go and ask them. If he would survive this and get healed. How pathetic that is, right? Israel how sad it is when you seek help somewhere else. This is where God is really grieved. So, God tells Elijah. Okay? God told Elijah to meet these people of the king and confront them, send them back to the king. Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending people to inquire? Beelzebub, the god of Ikron. He said, You shall surely die. Go tell that to your boss. See, what a courage God gives to his prophet. He stops his servants, this messenger, he said, you guys are going there, right? Just turn back and go tell your king. He surely will not get up from that bed. He will die. The king was so angry. He knew who this was. So Isaiah recognized, he asked him, how does he look and all? So he recognized the prophet. And he sends three companies of 50 to bring Elijah to the king. I already told you how this guy looks like. So they described the man. And he knew this was Elijah. The Elia one of the man said, So he sends uh, three companies of 50. Ambadavera Ranganda, Uru company, Uru group, or Uru captain, or captain would I choose. He sent an army, captain with 50 soldiers, to arrest him. They found him sitting on the top of a hill. The captain said to him, all right, man of God, the king has commanded you to come down with us. Elijah replied to the captain, if I am the man of God, let fire come down from heaven and destroy you. And you have 50 men. Fire fell from heaven, killed them all. They were consumed. The second batch comes. Same thing happens. Third guy was smart. Please don't kill me. I beg you, please come with me. Don't destroy me. See, all it really says is that God can use fire. Amen. God uses angels, God uses fire. You won't believe it. In Judges chapter 5, this is a song of Deborah. 
This is how she goes. The Kishon River swept them away. The ancient torrent, the Kishon, march on with courage, my soul. Kishon doda puradana nadiyam, Kishon doda thalli ang avare olikki kondu voi. En maname ni belatthode nadannu volga. You know, sometimes God uses flood to wipe your enemies away. Praise God. You probably would not even know, but God took care of them. God told the flood, just go wipe those guys out. Amen. See, God's protection. There are sometimes God gives you escape routes. As you read in Acts chapter 9, this is right after Paul's conversion experience. Chapter 9, verse 24, honors, I read for you. They were watching for him day and night at the city gate so they could murder him. So they joined a city gate. Paul, Saul of Tarsus is going to come this way. We're going to, you know, we're going to kill him here. But Saul was told about their plot. So during the night, some of the other believers lowered him in a large basket through an opening in the city wall. On a Koluan, Adam Bogan, Nagara Govita, till Kaval Karevichu, and the Ramana Shishin, my Rathril, Avene, Urkote Laki, Madil Varia, Yurakuto. Tell upon the Yutan and the Nesuchipan, just a hole in the wall is all that you need. Amen. Sometimes it is the fire, sometimes it is a flood, sometimes it's a small hole in the wall. The Yutan Veligari on the Manonula. A small opening is all that God needs to rescue you from your situation. You know, sometimes God uses kings. God uses royal decree. You know, in the book of Israel, chapter 6, you understand that Israel people have come back from exile. They started building the, the temple. And they, they rose against the king. They rose against the people. They went to the king and stopped the work. 16 long years, it stopped. So here, they come again. This whole idea of building, the, the temple comes again. They had to wait for another king by the name Darius to come. Cyrus gave the initial decree to build. Then another king, king came and then they kind of uh, went back and blocked it. Then they waited for King Darius to come. Now this is what the royal decree is. I'm reading verse 11 and 12. Those who violate this decree in any way will have a beam pulled from their house. Then they will be lifted up and impaled on it. And their houses will be reduced to a pile of rubble. May the God who has chosen the city of Jerusalem as a place to honor his name destroy the king or nation that violates his command and destroy this temple. I, Darius, have issued this decree. Let it be obeyed with all diligence. Devatana. Israel, my Doru Bando, Ilapta Jadi, Rajavina Kunda. Nina Kedre were in the Shatru Kedre Shakaramaita, Kalpana Boro Puruk and Kalibulu, the Yuatian, number saving. I'll read the Malayalam for you here. Arangli Kalpana Matia, I'm in the wheat in the Ruther and Varichet, Nati Adin men, I'm in a Tuki Kalim. I'm in the wheat on the Kupa Kunu Aki Kalim. Vernum in the Yan Kalpana Urukunu, either Matuan, Verishalem, Devali, and the Shipipan, Turina, Ye the Raja Vinum, Janathinum, Tandanama, out of a Sikimarakia, Devum, Nurmuda, Shamvertum, Dadia Vesha, and Yan Kalpana Urukunu, the Jagra the Ode, never think under the Amen. God's means. See, this is what you're living by the power of God. There are some people, some authority is going to rise up for you. Maybe you have no connection with them. You don't know them. You have no contact with them. But I tell you, they can start things for you. They can write, they can move some documents for you. Hallelujah. Why is this, this thing here for a long time? Who, why nobody is paying attention to this? Come on, do something about it. Clear it immediately. This week itself. 
Hallelujah. You know, sometimes God not only really uses flood, not a little hole in the wall, not fire. God sometimes use, uses insomnia. And you know what I'm talking about. This is, comes from the book of Esther, chapter 6. That night, says, I want you to imagine what happened in other chapters. If chapter 5, you all need to think about it. Everything is going to come down. Israel will be annihilated. The entire nation will be gone. Haman is ready. Gallo is ready. Soldiers are ready. Everything is about to be over. It's over. But we can always say, not so quickly. Our God is still on the throne, man. Our God is still on the throne. Hallelujah. He does not need much stuff, okay? He doesn't need much. He just needs to move just, you know, what did cut down on the other Hallelujah. That night, it's a very important night. We, when we studied Book of Esther, we talked about those things. That night, the king had trouble sleeping. And you all hear about this. Preachers talk about, you know, they elaborately they talk about this. If, Raja, if the king does not get sleep, what does he do? So many things. Drugs are available. Alcohol is available. He can listen to beautiful music. He can call women to come and dance before him. So many things. He can call the, the physician, the palace physician and say, hey, get me something. But that night, he ordered an attendant to bring the book of history of his reign so he could it, so it could be read to him. In the material, what a beautiful material. Who reads history? Who reads chronicles? None of us. That too in the middle of the night when I'm about to go to sleep, reading history will take the rest of the sleep away. You won't be able to go to sleep. But sometimes this is how God works. Praise God. Amnira Afriil. That insomnia, God still uses that in the lives of some people. Hallelujah. Yes, there are some people who say, wake up and say, oh man, I have to give him this back. I, off, I bought this from a long time ago. I borrowed this money from a long time. There's so many other things. I said this to him. I, I know I made him so upset by saying this. God can use all those things. When you go through, when you experience insomnia, just check the list and see if there is something that you forgot. The people to forgive, please forgive. Reconcile, pre reconcile. If you borrowed $5,000 from somebody long time ago, and you think it's a long time, they forgot. But God gave you that insomnia so that you remember it. Return it. Praise the Lord. I pray, I pray that some of you in those, I know that's not only you, there are, there are hundreds of people who watch this sermon every day. They too will remember something from your past. Something that you forgot. Something that you promised somebody. This is all doing with, I've seen, I'm a pastor, you know, I'm a missionary. You told people, I'll take care of you, brother. No problem, okay? Always, I'm always here for you. Think about those things that you said to people five, ten years ago. You never send him a dime. Maybe you should send an apology and say, I promise this to you, but here is a small gift for you. The Lord reminded me this morning. Hallelujah. He told him you'll pray. We never pray. Praise the Lord. 
That's what we do. I'm praying for all the people that I promised that I'd pray. It's just a blanket prayer. I want to close here. See, God uses anything to protect his children. I want you to know that you can live by the power of God. These are weapons that are available for children of God. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord gives his strength to us. God sends angels. God will send fire. God sometimes sends flood. God probably uses a, a hole in the wall. God sometimes uses insomnia. God uses all kinds of people. God sometimes uses a pagan armies. You know, when you, when you look at even the life of Paul, when he comes to the 23rd chapter of the book of Acts, you would see a man. He's just a Roman. And we were studying, the Bible study, we were right there in that portion. Who is this man? Claudius Lucius. Captain. He's, he's a commander. He's in charge of thousand soldiers. Who is he? He, could, he can go along with the Jewish lawmakers and go with them and then hand them over, hand Paul over to the people. But God spoke to this man. Don't give him into their hands. Don't give him into their hands. Pagan, a Roman soldier, commander. And he appoints hundreds of soldiers that very night to remove Paul from there to Caesarea. Don't think there's nobody here to speak a word for me. God can use a king, a pagan king. God can also use a pagan commander. Neyad Urubandhan has no relationship with you, but he will stand up for you. God's protection will be always with us. What a mighty God we serve. He deserves all glory. He deserves all praise. Kadun, why don't you give him a clap? Hall as we close here. Hallelujah. Koya, you can come forward, you know. Just give him praise. Hallelujah. I want you to go with that protection. Assurance. Your God is still there. He's on the throne. Shall we close our eyes? Hallelujah. Every eye close. I don't know what are things that you play your mind. What things worries you. But God wants to remind you this morning. Child, as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. Don't worry. The God of hosts is with you. Hallelujah. Emmanuel will be with you. I promise you I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you till the very end. Whatever that is bothering you today, God will be always with you. In the Ravale, Hadevatinda Karana Nana Kundugune, Niana Pokin Ella Paratinum, Nina Naratwa the Dayu Shaktara, Naneganella, Panadal Kadidi Dan Eganana, Anali Lavan and Oriuli. The new Rikil and Kaibuda Tiru Deum, the new Berchikatu Deum, then the Kodeunda. He will be with you till the very end. Father, I pray for all those who are here in this sanctuary who really feel a need to be assured about your protection and your power. I pray for them, Father. Strengthen them. I'm praying for all those who are watching us from distant lands. God, if they are worried about something, I pray that this word would strengthen their hearts, Lord, that God will be with them. God will use any means, that you would use any means, Lord, to achieve your purposes. Thank you, Father. Bless your people as they leave this church, this sanctuary here. When they go with confidence and assurance, knowing I'm not alone, God is with me. Thank you, Father. We also, Lord, want to thank you for the offering that we are about to collect now. Bless your people, Lord. Supply all the needs, Lord Jesus. If there's anyone who is going through struggles, unemployed, we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you supply all the needs. Thank you for your provisions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen.